third phase of moon. Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. My name is Blake Cousins, and we're live taking your calls from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon happening right now. We just did a special on Third Phase in regards to NASA and their incredible photos that are leaked. Uh, you know, they put out thousands of photographs over the week. We have UFO police out there scavenging over these photos meticulously, and they're coming up with incredible, you know, evidence that we're not alone. We posted this up on Third Phase. We want everybody to take a look at that. The NASA anomalies on Mars, the International Space Station. We're spreading this on Third Phase Moon, and we also wanted to say that Vladimir Putin says that the CIA created the Internet, and we're speaking on some kind of Internet. What he said was a a project that the CIA started, and uh, it's still a work in progress. Well, I guess we're all uh, part of this CIA experiment, and Vladimir Putin says we have a we have to work on this. Well, Vladimir's doing his own thing, but it's pretty interesting that a president will come out and 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 uh, maybe he's talking with Snowden. Snowden's giving him this information. He says that he's not getting the information from Snowden, but this sounds like a straight up uh, Edward Snowden leak. But we want to take your calls from around the world in regards to the phenomenon happening right now. What's NASA up to? Have you captured a UFO yourself? We also have. I'm excited to say Ed is with us. He's submitted incredible videos the past for the past uh, month and a half, two months now. Brent Brent Cousins is right here. It's going to be an exciting show. We got Ed, uh, the the new phenom of of incredible videos coming in. But let's go to uh, let's go to some callers before we get to Ed. They're uh, building up right now. But let's start off to Area Code six two six. We're uh, welcome to third phase. Where are you calling from? What's your name? 626, stand by. Uh, if you're there, you, you could uh, come on in, but we're taking calls from around the world. Let's see if 914 is right. back with us. 914, where are you calling from? What's your name? Yeah, how you doing, Blake? This is Ryan calling from outside New York City. Hey, Ryan. Doing good tonight. Uh, what's going on in New York? It's pretty late. What, about uh, 12, uh, oh, 5 in the morning? Yeah, exactly. Um, just got done uh, watching that that latest video a uh, gentleman from the UK uh filmed something very interesting that um yes, it, uh, it's I very similar he... to uh you know stuff I see around here all the time well some people were saying the footage from the UK we just posted it yeah a couple days ago uh, along with some other videos that he shot and if you go to his channel we'll be putting the link in the description below when we post this up on YouTube third phase but some people are saying this one, the first shot is just a basically an, uh, an airplane or a helicopter, and they go, how could you, Blake, share this on Third Phase of the Moon? It, it, it makes your credibility go to a lower level. You're, you're not doing it right. But no, no, that's not I'm true. looking at the video myself. I find it that this isn't no airplane. It's not a helicopter. It's, uh, it's not any type of flight char- characteristics I'm used to. What do you think, Ryan? Exactly. And um, also... There, there's been, you know, a lot of UFO sightings with um, with lights similar to planes and helicopters, and you know, you have this phenomenon of uh, these morphing planes that, you know, start out as like orbs and, you know, s- slowly morph into like an airplane. Well, the the theory is is that there's these uh, alien craft are that are visiting Earth on a constant basis. And the way they go about disguising themselves are uh, as uh-huh. these airplanes. Uh, there's yeah. this lady yeah. out there, Allison Cruz from uh, mm-hmm. from uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, that's yep. constantly in the blinking lights and yeah. they're morphing and they're saying that, hey, this is alien technology and they're just uh, basically hiding in plain sight. What do you think? Exactly. Yeah, no, that's I agree 100%. I'm seeing more and more of that. You know, stuff that just, you know, if somebody just takes a glance at it, you know, they're going to think it's a regular plane or helicopter. But, you know, if you look at these things long enough, you're noticing, you know, stuff that's totally unconventional. Like you said, it's starting out, you know, like as orbs. And and I've seen videos where you get to see the – it just morphs into a plane or – 
it's it's really crazy. The phenomenon is worldwide, and I believe that if aliens wanted to disguise themselves as airplanes, they could do it uh, very easily. And then it also could be the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, known as DARPA, and it's a United States Department of Defense uh, project, and they have these top-secret classified aircraft that they're experimenting on all the, t- all the time. And obviously they got to keep uh, the secrets from the public, from the enemies. I, sure. I totally concur. We also did a, a special update on some of these fantastic aircraft that they say they're conceptual designs, but I believe that, there are, uh, truly, that they truly exist right now, right? Absolutely. You got to remember uh, the the military industrial complex is easily twenty, thirty, forty years ahead of us as far as technology is concerned. So they could all aspects of the military could have all kinds of crazy stuff that uh, you know we're just starting to see. Right, I believe uh, what you're saying is exactly right. We haven't even uh, begun to. Uh see what they have in store for us. It's the tip of the iceberg. Let's go to uh, phone calls. We know we have Ed. Uh, his incredible videos have been seen around the world, I think, probably millions of times. And just within the past month, he's going to be joining us very shortly. But let's take some other callers. Stand by, Ryan. Thanks. Eric Code 702, you're live, third phase of moon. Tell us where you're calling from, what's your name, and you got a UFO sighting you want to report or chime in. Go ahead, 702. How are you, Blake? Uh, my name is Johnny. I'm with the Las Vegas UFO. Uh, uh, Las Vegas Mojave UFO hunters here locally, and um, to the you know, show. how's actually, the hunting going on over there? You know, actually, we're getting, you know, we're getting some activity, but nothing we can really pinpoint. You know, they're so far out in the distance. We we really want to capture something close and distinguishable. But as far as the planes are concerned, I just had one of my. Um, one of my co-hunters actually called me yesterday and told me about, actually I spoke with him today and he said, I saw something really weird. He goes, these planes are coming in with their lights on and they don't look like normal lights at all. And then he says, when they come in almost over the city, they cut their lights off and you can't see them at all. He goes, what was unusual about this one is that there's no blinker after it goes off. You know, some people uh, come, Compare them to uh, transformers more than meets the eye kind of thing, and uh, they're constantly uh, pretty. They they reveal themselves and end up being retarded like in their way of uh, the mm-hmm. way they, you know, yeah. The lights aren't blinking. They're not following FAA regulations. Then all of a sudden the lights stop. Mm-hmm. It's like who's flying this aircraft? And then it's uh, what's this? Go ahead, Johnny. Um, I was going to say, I mean, it would make sense as far as, like, to change as far as shape or anything because technically they wouldn't have to change the shape of their ship, just the atmosphere, the anti-gravitational barrier, as far as what I'm studying so far, and that they can actually shift the anti-gravity field to do whatever they want it to do. So, yeah, it's possible they could um, – Transform that into what you're seeing Well we're talking to Ed tonight And he's going to explain to us a little bit About his theory He says he's been aboard these craft His videos are uh, incredible It's a basic, the biggest thing In uh, the video evidence that we've seen In over a year now We're not sure exactly if Ed's Sending us real footage, we're not exactly sure We're looking close in on it We're not exactly, we're pretty fine We find it uh, very intriguing. We're blowing up the videos, getting in very close, analyzing it down to the pixel, and we see no green screen of any any sort. There's no uh, CGI as far as what we're looking at. We're, what we believe is that what we're seeing is something there, and we're not seeing any kind of mm-hmm. strings attached. We just opened up with uh, the Wiley One's uh, music video where we just uh, presented that of a fan film, the uh, fan film music video. And you could see puppeteering. You know what's fake and what's not. We find Ed's oh, footage definitely. absolutely stunning. Have you been watching a Third Phase of Moon's uh, release of Ed's footage, Johnny? Oh, most definitely. And, and you know, as far as you're saying, as different as far as megapixels, you know, I've looked at it too as well. And, you know, if it is a fake, it's going to be a very 
difficult one, but I mean, you know, that's at this point it's to be determined. Yeah, so you even see a certain light that appears on one of Ed's videos where it looks like a FAA light kind of blinking off and on a red light, but it's definitely not a red light. It's just doing this exactly. thing that it's trying to stealth in a plain sight. Johnny, keep us uh, updated on your research over there, and I, I appreciate you keeping your eyes on the skies. And if you capture something amazing over there, where are you going to send it, Johnny? On YouTube, on John Rawlings' channel. Easy enough. Thanks, Johnny, and uh, hopefully uh, good luck on happy hunting. Stand by, and I, I, maybe you might have a chance to speak with Ed tonight and ask him a question in regards to his uh, incredible videos. But we're going to take some other calls while Ed hopefully uh, joins us. I'm pretty. He says he's going to join us sometime around 6.30 Hawaii time. He's somewhere in the United States, and we're hoping he's going to join us. But let's take some calls right now. Area code 203, welcome to Third Phase Moon. Do you have a UFO sighting you want to report? Chime in. Where are you calling from, and what's your name? Hello? Yeah, 203, you're live, Third Phase. This is Blake Cousins. Go oh, ahead. Yeah, yeah this is my, my name is Fernando Garcia. Uh, just when I, I saw, I hear the thing that you, you got an interview with the guy uh, he that he say he is from the Majestic 12. I don't know. I'm not sure if he really was the guy from there. Because every time that I use, say something about the UFOs, I mean, they come like, they, they call the men in black to shut up the people. And they try to kill them, disappear, things like that. And how this guy, he comes to the show and say, asking anything about the UFOs. I mean, that's one thing that I want to say. The other thing is um, um, I had a, a telescope and a binoculars that I sometimes I go outside in the night. And I see... One second, let me, before we get to your UFO expense, experience, you wanted uh -huh. to, you're uh, explaining to the listeners and uh, viewers right now about uh, Mr. Tony Moreno. He called in a couple weeks ago on our radio show. It was one of the most controversial radio shows we had in a while where... Mm -hmm. A man to, uh, by the, the man of, name of Tony Moreno claims he was the head of Majestic 12. He had a to, uh, 12. He had a top secret uh, clearance of 30, and he w had a presidential order from Reagan and uh, Bush that he had. He was above national security, and he could do whatever he wanted. And I could ask him whatever he wanted about UFOs. The problem was, is when we wanted to get information about the UFOs, he was just pretty much saying what's out there on the Internet. And if he was in charge of Majestic 12, we would have hoped that he would have gave us something new. And uh, that was a little bit of disappointment to myself and everybody that was listening. But, hey, we're still open to Tony Moreno coming back on Third Phase Moon. If he has new evidence, something that he could shock the world with and at least uh, participate in something as uh, submitting evidence. What do you mm -hmm. think about that, Mr. Garcia? Go ahead. Well, uh, well, that's the one thing that I, I, I'm seeing, right? Uh, because a lot of people they they try to scare and to say you don't have to say anything. Now, I've been mean, experienced uh, a couple of times. Uh, I've been mean, seeing a UFO uh, where I live, but I don't have the the, uh, the equipment to to tape it and send it to somebody else. I mean, I subscribe to your uh, to the YouTube that you had. That, their face of moon, and I like it. But, I mean, there's nobody to talk about it because every time that I try to talk to somebody, they laugh about me or make, you know, make me feel like uh, I'm crazy or something like that. And I don't talk uh, with nobody about these things. Just I keep it by myself. But when you see it, you see it like it's steady in, on the air. But it's moving it's slow for, forward. And um, another thing, I don't know if you have time for me, but I, I can explain another time. When I was living in Connecticut, I had one experience, something um, that I, when I was sleeping, I had my little dog on my side, and I, I lay down, I ended up lay down on the sofa, and my little dog, he was next to me. When I opened it in my eyes, because I feel like if somebody's, put impression on my chest, and I can't even move. I was laying down my my right hand 
to the floor, and when I open my eyes, I see my dog next to my feet, and from my waist down, my legs, they were shaking up and down like crazy, but I can't even move. The only thing I try to do is call my wife, but it feels like nothing is coming out from my from my mouth. So I close my eyes and I start praying. And when I open it, uh, I saw a light, like a triangle, of very bright light from from cover me from from my the bottom to the top to the ceiling, like a triangle. And I see a small shape, like a ghost, next to me. And the only thing that I feel it was sweating a lot. I can't even move. And every time that I try to talk to somebody, they say, oh, that's because you don't go to the church. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I, I didn't talk to anybody anymore. But I, I like to, to see your show and I hear a lot of things. And hopefully one day I can catch up one of those UFOs and I can send it to you. Mr. Garcia, but, we uh, appreciate you. Uh, just explaining right what it's all about right here at Third Phase of Moon. We're all here to listen to stories. Uh, people out there are ridiculed out there in the public. People are hateful about the truth. They don't want to wake up that we're not alone in the universe. And Third Phase of Moon is a place to share your stories and uh, not be ridiculed. And be you're part of the Third Phase of Moon family. We've all experienced incredible uh, things ourselves. So, Mr. Garcia, when we do or somebody captures a UFO, I hope they do deliver it to us. And uh, I want you to stand by, Mr. Garcia, because we're having a special guest on. I'm hoping he joins us a little bit later, Ed, who's been submitting incredible videos to us right here at Third Phase of Moon. Uh, you know, we're just hoping that he shows up. Everybody could ask him the questions, what's it like to be in a UFO and all this. Maybe we'll get some answers. Mr. Garcia, stand by. Now let's okay. go to uh, some other callers that have been waiting, if they're on, li- on the line. Anonymous, uh, you got some new relevant information. You got uh, you got two minutes. Go ahead. Sure. Yes, I do. What I believe what will unfold in the near future is there will be a civil war of sorts, wherein the uh, zeta reticulin human hybrids that have been created are extremely uh, human looking, so much so that you couldn't tell one apart from us, other than their uh, character or. Uh, Demeanor, and what I believe will happen is they're going to uh, uh, make an overt presence at some point in the future, in the near future, and they will. This will obviously uh, shatter some of the uh, religious beliefs, and will cause a lot of controversy. And what they're going to do, I believe, is they're going to uh, tempt people into a philosophy in which you do not have to be forgiven for your sins, because of course this will challenge the church and the religions so they are going to attempt to pull people into their paradigm of belief systems in which one does not have to be uh, forgiven for what they've done for any evil they perpetrate or anything like that and they will want to uh, manipulate people into these systems in an attempt to convince people to leave behind the uh, older ways of thinking the uh, religious ways of thinking and this will cause an internal division on the planet, and there will be Christians, and there will just be people of good character who aren't religious, who will end up in a, a war of sorts with other people. And this will be what's called the tribulation. And I believe this will unfold uh, in the near future. And right now they've, they're attacking me on a regular basis with these uh, synthetic telepathy attacks, and they're attacking other people I know of. They're even attacking children. So I'd ask people who are listening if they ever want to, uh, because these ETs are monitoring people all over the planet. If you ever want to just say, hey, I'm, you know, we know what you're doing, and we're going to hold you accountable for it, uh, myself and others I know would surely appreciate it because they are very, these ETs are very fearful. They're cowards, and they know that uh, a lot of people are waking up and are aware of what they're doing. So I would surely appreciate it if people would um, uh, keep that in their hearts and minds uh, on, uh, on behalf of myself and others. Thank you, uh, Anonymous. Uh, we'd like to get the word out and uh, appreciate you keeping it down to a couple minutes. Uh, the microwave blast, 
people have uh, said that E.T. is, uh, you know, evil and we, sh- we should not back down uh, as cowards to them. I'm uh, thinking that, you know, there's good and bad aliens and uh, just like there are good and bad humans out there. Let's go to other callers right now. We're live standing by for Ed calling in, sharing his stories in regards to his incredible videos. But let's go to area code 469. Welcome. You're live, Third Phase of Moon. Tell us where you're, what your name and where you're calling from. Hey, Blake, this is uh, Sammy uh, calling from Dallas. Can you hear me? Sam, yeah, we hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, I haven't talked to you in a while. I don't know if you remember me. I had called in a, probably about probably about six shows ago. Uh, but I always love listening to you guys, and uh, it's just so hard for me to tune in at 10 o'clock. I was timing it. I was watching the counter go down 48 minutes until the show started. But I love the show, and I love everything you guys do. Uh, I just had some, like, uh, really uh, interesting things to talk about, and I uh, just kind of want to know how much time I have to talk or what what's uh, the time frame Well, hey, thank, that thanks we have. for joining uh, Third Phase Moon, Sam. Appreciate you watching. Uh, look, uh, we got famous abductee, incredible videos. He's coming on the show. He hasn't arrived yet, so you have uh, as, long as, uh, as long as it is until okay. Ed joins us. Okay. Because uh, I just story. have, Go like, ahead. some really uh, – and I think that you are really instrumental because, you know, you've built such a big following with your brother and a lot of people are really proud of you and uh, seeing what you're doing. I mean, you're just getting more and more exposure and uh, that can be good and bad. You know what I mean? Uh, and so uh, really what I wanted to kind of discuss was, um, you know, Anonymous calls in and talks about some interesting things. And, you know, a lot of people, there's like a split kind of, there's been some clashes when he's called in, so you know, where people are like, I've had very positive experience with extraterrestrials or, you know, UFOs. And, you know, some people have had these negative experiences. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but like in the city tap water, if you take a shower in like city tap water water, there's really high amounts of chlorine in it. And the chlorine is so bad for your skin and for your eyes. But what's interesting is it absorbs into your brain and can remove parts of the pineal gland, which is the third eye, and not to mention lots of fluoride and stuff. So I just wanted all the listeners to know, you know, this is like an alert. This is an alert for everybody. If you haven't put a a filter on your shower, you know, you're vaporizing chlorine gas in levels higher that are in swimming pools into your lungs and into your body. And that's hurting a lot of people. And I think you do a great job at it, but I I would just say, please get a little bit more into, you know, helping people heal their bodies and not like Alex Jones. I don't know if you listen to him, but you know how he's selling all these health supplements or whatever lately? Yeah, we, uh, I watched Jones, and uh, he, you know, he's selling the supplements, like you say, and he yeah. focuses on this kind of subject matter. What yeah, do you but want like, from the, us but, right but here, he never. But moon? listen, he always he sells the water filter, the water purifiers for people to drink, like the Berkey water purifiers, you know. But he never tells anybody about the shower, or he never talks about, you know, uh, like healing your third eye and and stuff like that. And that's what I'm saying. Like I think. I think we just lost uh, lost them, and uh, we will be at Third Phase of the Moon covering possible poison waters. Hey, why not? If somebody thinks that there's injustice going on and we don't know about it and there's something that needs to get out to the world, we'll, we'll share it on Third Phase of the Moon. So all you Third Phase of the Moon nights, go after anything that you think that there's injustice going on, and we'll try and get the word out if we can. Ed just joined us right here at Third Phase of the Moon. And I wanted to welcome to the show, but my first question, Ed, is what's it like to be on a UFO? And again, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me again, Blake. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. I enjoyed, I'm glad you guys enjoyed my last uh, submission that I sent to you guys. And I know a lot of people have been asking about why are my segments so short. I just wanted to tell you I have all these archival footage, but most of the stuff I shot was shot on film. And when you're shooting film, you do field, film edits, field edits. You're not rolling film like it's just digital stuff. You can just go, go, go. You have to be conservative with what you're shooting. But I have a lot of stuff, and I continue to send it, and I hope your 
people watching and listening enjoy watching and seeing the stuff that I have, and I'll continue to release it. It's a lot of stuff. Again, uh, Ed, I really want to get down to the details. This, in, this video you just sent us is incredible, and you were explaining earlier to me that this is shot he was it shot on film, but on VHS, and uh, and you were just shortly uh, taken on board right after uh, this video. The footage I shot you that you saw that I went on the craft afterward. That's the right time period. But I was shooting film before this time appeared. I was shooting film back in the late 1960s, and I have video. I mean, I think I have film archival footage of of alien footage, and. I, I, when I shot the last segment that you saw that I said that I went on the craft at that time, that is right. That was when that happened. Ed, let me, let me get more detail. What I want to get down to, what does it feel like to be on board this flying saucer, this alien craft, uh, the man or this alien that you say, Voss, guided you? Was he on board this? And, again, can you tell us what's it like to be on board the aircraft? Well, I started to talk to you about it before, Blake, and just briefly, it is something that's familiar but different as well because you got to understand that the experiences are something that happened many, many years ago, but it is a part of my life that I do remember vividly. But at the same time, it just seems to be all in step with what's happening today in the world. We're getting a little bit of breakup right here um, on the radio show. If everybody could uh, silence their phones as best as they possibly can, but... If anybody wants yeah, to chime in, Ed. we got Ed on, on the line. If anybody wants to ask Ed a question uh, in regards to his experiences, abductions, the videos that he uh, shares right here in Third Phase Moon, the lines are open. Yeah, I have hey, a question. Ed. Okay, go ahead. Tell us your, your area code first, and then uh, go ahead with the question. Uh, I'm actually a truth seeker. You, uh, you did some... Yes. What area code yes, are you I'm, calling from? Just the area code. Go uh, ahead. Oh seven oh one three. I'm calling okay. from Clifton, New Jersey. It's seven oh one three. I got a question. I Have you uh like when you're inside speaker. these crafts, what kind of technology are you seeing? I'm not an expert in technology or diagnosing or telling you exactly what kind of engineering specs or technology. That's not my experience or my expertise at all. I couldn't answer that question in an intelligent no. way. All right, I was just wondering if you, uh, you know, ever saw any, you know, anything that you can equate to, you know, our technology or back engineering or anything like that. That was just one of the things I was interested in. I, I think I mentioned before to Blake that my experience was based on, you know, um, uh, a recollection of what it was like to be on the craft. And my recollection of that is not one based on a scientific explanation, but more of an experience in terms of just the way time was moving and my experience in that and that uh, do you do you have um, what was do you in have terms any... of time that I was gone and the time that I was there Ed, Ed standing by no no I just was wondering if you know about the technology that's all not you know I that was basically about it and I just wanted to call in and thank you too you know for uh, having you know you know just being doing what you do, putting the truth out there, and you know not being scared and putting you know my picture that I sent you. I got my own YouTube channel, Truth Seeker, and you know I go through these Mars photos, and uh, I spend a lot of time doing it. And I found some real crazy stuff that just doesn't make sense, you know. And you try to get an answer from NASA, and it's you know where that goes. It just goes nowhere. I've probably sent in. My years of doing this, probably a thousand emails to NASA, and I've gotten maybe like five responses, and basically they weren't even to the questions I was asking. So I just, you know, kind of just hit a brick wall. Wow, uh, True Seeker, I appreciate that you were uh, calling in to Third Phase of Moon, and you did give us the heads up uh, about a week ago about this machine on the surface yes. of Mars, and we were standing by because we were thinking. This is incredible footage, but we wanted to have a, s some more information coming in in regard to that from other people around the world. And there's a lot of anomalies that just came in this past month from ours, so we thought it would be a perfect time for uh, to share your hard work that you've done. What's your uh, what's the response? You said you had five response uh, letters back from NASA after you've written them 500 times trying to get some <laughs> answers. 
What was some yeah, of probably that? over the, you know over the years of doing this, and I'll just you know get generic responses to uh, you know enjoy our website. Uh, it's a great age of discovery, and they'll like give me a link to the website where I'm getting the pictures. I mean, it just absolutely no response to the question I'm sending them. I'll send them a picture of something that I think is a beautiful statue, and asking them to maybe check it out, or if they have other photos, they can send me or links to other photos for maybe other angles, and just absolutely no response. You know, it's it's like talking uh, to a wall. Speaker, how do you go about, do you go every, you just look over these pictures that NASA releases from the Curiosity methodically, just you're hunting out frame by frame, zooming in. How, how do you go about this investigation and this work that you do? Well, what I do is I take uh, every day, you know, I'm I'm on the computer. I have a special, I got a laptop and, uh, you know, just a, you know, a home, regular home computer that's, you know, nothing fancy, but it's just basically used for that. And every day I download the pictures. I'll go through them and, you know, I'll see, you know, maybe five, six hours a day, sometimes longer. And if I find something that I think is interesting, I'll make a short video and then I'll put it up on uh, my 70-inch screen. And then I'll go through it from there, you know, and I could just start, you know, after a while you just get an eye for these things. And you could see there's a lot of manipulation in these pictures. There's um, black blocking of things. There's things actually behind the black blocking. You could see, like, the edges of it. Um, there's another guy that does these videos, uh, Will, at What's Up in the Sky 37. And he says to me he thinks that a lot of this is done by computer, that it's just, you know, a computer program that's just blocking and that maybe there's a couple people at NASA that just fill in some of these things. That's how some of these things get through. And uh, over the years, I've noticed that it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I've seen what seems to be, you know, uh, statues, people, um, mechanical things. I have a picture uh, that I'm working on now, a video that I'm going to release that I think is groundbreaking. It actually shows actual life on Mars, insects. Um, it, one of them looks like a gigantic fly. Another one's a little worm. Um, I'm probably going to maybe do something with you guys. I'll email you, and maybe we'll do like a release, and you know, we'll we'll get this out there. We'll see if we you know we could shake it up and maybe get a response, because what I'll show you is just amazing. It's, I've been sitting on it for a little bit. I just didn't know what to do with the information. But I think maybe I'll do something with you guys because I just love what you guys do. I mean, you're not scared of nobody. You put it out there, and you let everybody else, you know, make up their mind. You you know, you don't try to sway people one way or another. You put the info out there, and, you you know, you search for the truth. That's basically what I'm doing. And it's tough, you know, in a, in a government, in the United States, in a world that we live in, it's like nobody uh, – you know, nobody wants to help you. You know, everybody's scared. The news channels, the newspapers. You know, I call Channel Four News in New York, and you would have thought that I was talking about bombs. <laughs> you know, you do. You, you would have thought that I was talking. You know, th- th- like I was a terrorist or something. Nobody wants to talk to you. It's uh, it's unbelievable. You know, you would figure then, uh, people want this information. About it, they do talk about it every once in a while. Like there's obvious phenomenon or anomalies on these photographs from curiosity like that one just recent photo that we posted on third phase of the moon of the apparition or a light out there but then they'll yeah. always start out with giggling about oh yep. could there be life or was there and then uh, end it with a laughter and a a, a snide remark and a like wink, it's a wink joke like they're thing. making fun of us you know it's and like it's they're making fun of us a, why don't they explain it already yeah i mean i that picture I sent you is a clear cut. I mean, to me, I've examined it many different ways. There's actually shadows coming off that piece. There's pieces coming out of it that are leaving shadows on the ground. It's not a reflection off the top of the rock. I examined it in Photoshop on a 70 inch TV, um, high definition video. You know, I mean, that rover, the pictures that are coming down now, it's absolutely disgusting. Billions of dollars. And we're getting pictures. I can get a better picture with, I got probably a 10-year-old digital camera. You know, it's just, it's horrible. And the pictures are actually getting worse, the quality. And I've noticed that some of the older pictures on the website 
they're doing something to them, and they're they're backing the resolution off. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing it because us guys are going through them. It's it's just very very strange. I've had a lot of problems with my videos on YouTube. Uh, some people can only get them at 360. They can't even watch my videos in high definition. You know, I've had my computer hacked twice. You know, some weird cars following me, you know, since I started doing this. I mean, I've been going through these pictures and studying this kind of stuff for over 20 years. The last three months, I decided, you know what, i got to get off my butt. i got to put my stuff out there, and I, got, I, I just have to. I can't be scared. And I got family and friends that support me. They they see what I'm doing, and you know it's it's a little scary putting yourself out there like that. But you know I have to get this information out there. I mean, not everything I show is an anomaly. Maybe you know some of them could be rocks, but you know what? Just that one has to be real, Blake, and it changes the whole game. Just one of them. I could put a thousand anomalies out there, but just one has to be real, and it changes the whole game. Because I believe Mars is populated. The pictures that we see don't even resemble what I think is up there. And it's uh, it's sad. It's really sad that that part of our history is being withheld from us. You know? Absolutely. But I do have yeah, something that I think is groundbreaking. And I'm going to contact you through uh, your email. And we'll, we'll do something together and we'll release it. And we'll see if we could shake this thing up a little. Because guys Let's like us are not up. going away. Let's shake it up, Truth Seeker. We'll uh, be standing by for uh, your continuing investigation about the Mars and its possible life out there. I believe something's going on. These photographs that you've shared and all these other photographs going around by the UFO police keeping a close eye, there's something going on on Mars, and I don't think we're being told the 100% truth. We have a few minutes left. Truth Seeker, you keep in touch via my email. Let's go to uh, area code 619. We're just about to wrap up the show, but uh, did you have anything to say for, in regards to what we just showed? Uh, Ed, we still have Ed on the phone. Any questions for Ed? Area code 619, we're uh, live right now, third phase of moon. No, I'm actually just listening, thanks. It's interesting. Thank you, I'm just listening. Oh, that's cool, area code 619. Well, basically, I think that is the end of the show. Uh, Ed has just dropped out. Uh, there's there's a lot of stuff going on around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon. We just released what's going on on Mars, the International Space Station. We're talking about footage from all over the world. We're going to share it right here at Third Phase of Moon. Everybody, you know, keep your eyes on the skies. And if you capture something incredible, we want to see it on Third Phase of Moon because we are the world's largest UFO channel in the world. We have... 160,000 subscribers today, approaching 100 million views worldwide, and that's just on YouTube alone. We know we're doing something, and we are shaking it up, just like the truth seeker said. So, Third Phase Moon, we got a few minutes, uh, just an extended radio show, 336. You're live, Third Phase Moon. You got anything to report? we got five minutes. Go ahead. Um, with whom am I speaking again, please, sir? This is Blake Cousins, Third Phase of Moon. Go ahead. You're live. Oh. You got five minutes. Oh, no. no doubt. All right. All right. How you doing, Blake? Uh, uh, just to stay as anonymous as I can, I'm going to go by a handle, uh, Buck. And, um, you know, I never did report this one sighting, that, and it was a multiple witness sighting. That go ahead, happened Buck. in uh, uh, 2008, uh, the summer. Uh, we were driving home late. Uh, I'm from North Carolina, by the way. And uh, we were driving driving home very late from Greensboro, uh, north 220. When uh, when we hit the last stoplight in Summerfield going north, we saw this really cool-looking amber light. And because of so many radio towers, you know, uh, we, we thought perhaps another one was going up somewhere or had gone up. And uh, about 10 minutes up the road, you know, and, we're, and mind you, we're doing 55, uh, this thing is coming down out of the sky, really, you know, at at a, at a really nice even pace. And when we get to this uh, this this little side road that branches off to the right, or, or going going east rather, um, we were right beside of one of these really huge black triangle craft that had a really, really huge, and, and, and mind you, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an aviation professional. I, I make my living in aviation. 
And uh, I had never seen anything like that in my life. And um, I'd I'd wondered perhaps whether, uh, uh, and I check you guys on YouTube a lot and and look for, uh, and it it wasn't a a strobing light, like an anti-collision beacon or anything. It was pulsating, if you get my meaning there, kind of like a heartbeat. But uh, uh, just, just, you know, and and I never did report it. And all three, my my wife and my kid and I at the time, uh, saw it. I slowed down. And wouldn't you know, I didn't have a camera. (laughs) Oh, man. It it was just, and, and I've never seen anything like it since. And like I said, I'm I'm familiar with all manner of aircraft. By the way, I'm I'm, I'm also an A and P or an aircraft uh, or airframe and power plant mechanic, and uh, and and a pilot. And right. I, I so have, basically, what, what do you think? Uh, what do you think you saw? What do your family members think of uh, your story? Well, uh, well, you know, my well, my family was there with me. We were all in the car together, and we all oh. saw it. Yeah, all three of us, and uh, and uh, I, I of course you, you know like I said we didn't report it to move on or anybody and uh, and being an aviation professional you really don't want to you really don't want to rock any kind of boats and get anybody on you or anything and I've heard all kinds of horror stories about such things as that but I, you know I tell you I looked over YouTube and I and 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 discovered this thing called the TR-3B, it, you know, and I, I subscribed to Aviation Week. There, there's never any kind of coverage on things like that. But, but you know, I just wanted to uh, tell anybody out there that might be listening that has seen these things that they are seeing them. I've seen them. Uh, Buck, you got to hold on. Unfortunately, we have only a minute left, and we're just running right sure. out of time right here at Third Phase Moon. But do you mind if we call you back? Uh, we have your phone number listed, Buck, and if you could come back maybe next Friday, we could ask you uh, in questions in regards to what maybe happened to Malaysia and more details about your uh, incredible UFO experience. How's that sound, Buck? Oh, well, that sounds okay. I can't make any promises, of course, because of my schedule. Uh, I'm also the after-hours guy uh, where I work, <laughs> so I mean, it's it's kind of really hard to say. But I, I appreciate you uh, letting me vent about that because I'm telling you, even after all these years, I, I just can't quit thinking about that night. It was, uh, and other people that are seeing these, they are seeing them. They're there. I've seen them. And uh, and I'm an aviation professional, so you know, any, uh, I'm hoping to put a whole lot of people's uh, minds at ease. They're, they're not crazy. People like you confirm that people that have UFO experiences aren't crazy, and the world is waking up to this. But thanks a lot for joining us right here at Third Phase Moon, and we love people's stories that they share right here live on the radio. Buck, keep your eyes on the skies and have your camera ready next time. I sure will. Thank you a lot, sir. Thank you. Everybody, stand by. Third phase. By popular demand, we are pleased to announce that Third Phase of Moon album is finally featured on iTunes. With all your favorite songs and themes, you hear on the top UFO channel on YouTube, Third Phase of Moon. Out of this world soundtracks composed by master artist Paul Barrett. 12 remastered and extended cuts to enjoy. Download them now, exclusive on iTunes. Click the link in the description below. Now listen for yourself, heard by millions around the world, Paul Barrett's album, Third Phase of Moon.